I'm sitting in a gutter in Chicago because today I want to talk about fire hydrants because this design of the local edition are pretty interesting. In fact, the city's home to around 48,000 of these. And being more than just an interesting part of the way the city looks, these hydrants themselves have some interesting design factors. That includes the location accessibility and this system of color coding. Unlike most cities in the world, Chicago uses a single style of hydrant across the entire city. In fact, these are known as the Chicago Hydrant. And here's why their design is so clever. Chicago as a city is sensitive to fire. In fact, the second star on its iconic flag is a tribute to the Great Chicago Fire of 1871. The story goes that the fire was started by a cow owned by an Irish immigrant, Catherine O'Leary, when it knocked over a lantern as it was being milked. And the damage was devastating. In the end, hundreds of people died and a full 100,000 people, or a third of the population, were left homeless. Since then, there have been significant improvements in fire safety, including the design of hydrants. Part of the accessibility of the system is just how common these hydrants are. There are tens of thousands of them across the city and they're located around every 100 meters. So what that means is that no building or house is more than 50 meters away from one. Now, they're only useful if they work, which is why one of the challenges that the Chicago Fire Department has is thieves taking brass rings inside these. These are known as the port ring and located just under this cap. They're only worth around $20 of scrap metal, but dozens have been stolen across the cities and people have been arrested for stealing them. Now, firefighters do keep a backup in their truck or you can go use a different hydrant, but obviously Obviously that slows the response. Identifying and accessing fire hydrants quickly is incredibly important. There's a few ways in which the system does that. The hydrants are connected to the mains water and they're all at street level which makes them accessible to firefighters. To ensure that the fire hydrants are accessible it's illegal to park in front of them. So it's marked by this yellow strip right here and you can't park within three meters of one of the hydrants. In my home city of Melbourne, there's another clever system that firefighters use to identify hydrants quickly. And that's this series of blue squares and rectangles on the poles and on the road. The way it works is the blue rectangles face the street, and they let the driving firefighters know that there's a hydrant nearby, and then the blue squares are pointed at the hydrant itself. Now I read that one of the reasons that Chicago doesn't have these blue street level markers is that when it snows in winter, they need to clear it and they can't use them. Because unlike Melbourne, Chicago gets snow, a lot of it. And this is an interesting challenge for fire hydrants. In some places to get extreme snow, hydrants are raised to a surprising height or they have a flag that's attached to it. And there are two challenges that snow has for hydrants, access and freezing over. Historically, manure was put on hydrants and as it broke down, the biological process would produce heat and that would prevent the hydrant from freezing. These days to address this challenge, there's a regular call out from the fire department to encourage people to clear the hydrants as they go about clearing the snow from footpaths. You know how I said that the story went that the Great Chicago Fire was started by Mrs. O'Leary's cow? Well, that was a story that was shared everywhere, at the time and in the decades afterwards. But it just wasn't true. This was a convenient scapegoating of an Irish immigrant who were part of the underclass at the time. A convenient tale to explain a horrible tragedy. In fact, in 1997, the Chicago City Council actually formally exonerated her and her cow, much to the appreciation of her descendants, some of which had become firefighters themselves. The actual cause of the Great Chicago Fire will probably never be known for sure. But what we can do is develop technologies and systems to stop it from ever happening again. And part of that is hydrogen design. The most obvious design feature of these hydrants is the colour. Now all of them are red which makes it easy to identify that these belong to the city. And if you go to different parts of Chicago or Illinois you'll see different designs, shapes and colours. And there's another system that's used by the fire department and that's the colour coding of these flanges. And this is the system that lets the firefighters know the pressure of the water. And what that's got to do with is the connection that the hydrant links to in the water main system. So red is the most common and there for eight inch water mains. Yellow represents the larger 12 to 16 inch design. Blue is for the biggest one at 16 inches. Now white means that the water main connection is only six inches in diameter or smaller. Now they might be located at the end of the line or places where there's no redundant capacity. So what that means is that when firefighters are fighting a big blaze, they might find an alternative, but they do provide water if needed. And and all of this is part of a system which aims to keep the city safe. From a random street in Chicago, I'm Julian O'Shea.